So in this video, we're gonna be talking about what you need to do if you're climbing between V6 and V8, and we're starting right now. And if you guys like climbing hard stuff, consider subscribing because that's all I talk about. And yes, V6 to V8 is hard. And especially if you're watching this video, if that's your limit that you're climbing, that is hard for you. Things that I climb, other people find easy. So don't take that the wrong way. Now, climbing in the V6 to V8, which on the font scale is 7A to 7B+, plus, that's kind of confusing. V8 ends up getting 7B and 7B+. Plus. I don't know why, but let's just get that out of the way at the beginning of this video. A lot of this depends on actually how long you've been climbing and how long it's taking you to get to this point. If it's taking you five years to get to V6, you probably have a lot of skill, but you're lacking some strength. If you climbed V6 in your first year of climbing, that means that you're really strong, but you lack a lot of technique. So this is going to kind of depend on what type of training you do moving forward. I know for me, I climbed V7 a little over a year after I started climbing. So that to me told me that I was fairly strong, but not good at technique. And I struggled to add to that level because it took me a long time to climb that V7 because I had to get the beta so dialed that I could actually use my strength to get up that climb. So at this level, I would not suggest doing training only days. I think that you should incorporate some training into your sessions, but you need to be climbing as well. This includes limit bouldering, uh, static climbing, and different types of techniques that you can use to try and make yourself better at climbing. Now in the last video I did on V0 to V5, I said that you know those climbers need to be uh, working on those advanced techniques such as like toe cams and different types of compression moves and all this weird stuff that you don't typically get on some of the straightforward left, right, left, right gym climb. And I think in this level, you need to be focusing on that still. Like I said, if you've had more experience and you just haven't gotten the strength up, then that might not be a priority for you. But if you are in that category where you need that advanced technique, let me know in the comments down below and I will make a video on that technique that you're struggling with because there's a lot of weird ones out there that you don't really get too often and that can really help your climbing and you can le learn a lot like i just actually taught my wife the other day how to do knee scums i mean that's something that you will not find on v3 gym climbs most likely so that's something that if you want me to make a video on that just leave a comment down below and i'll make sure to make that video on days that you're at the gym after you've done a bit of wall climbing, which by that I mean doing a bouldering session or something like that, between maybe a half hour to an hour and a half, depending on how much energy you have, you can start to incorporate some training into your routine. So the first thing that you want to do is hangboard approximately one to two times a week. And that is going to help strengthen your fingers, which are arguably the most important thing to get strong as a climber because you really can't make up for that with other parts of your body. The second thing you want to do is start to do a little bit of campus work. This can be a little intense depending on what your strengths are. I know for me, I've been fairly good at doing campus board stuff uh, because of my background, but some people will struggle with this. So if you are at the level where you can do 10 pull-ups in at body weight pretty consistently, you can start to try to do some canvas boards, but you know, tread lightly at first, but you wanna do this maybe one to two times a week. I would suggest not doing it on the same days you do hangboarding because it can be a little intense on the fingers. Uh, so you wanna split that up and you wanna get plenty of rest in between those two things. The third thing is doing a lot of core strengthening. I'd say do this at least four times a week, every session that you're getting in. Uh, you can even do this on a rest day in some cases, but getting a strong core can help you in so many cases and it can really make up for some other weaknesses in your body. So definitely you want to strengthen that core, get it ready to go. And again, it's not six minute abs. It's not, you know, you're not looking for a ripped six pack. 
you're trying to strengthen your core that includes your back muscles your lower back your glutes your and, and your entire front part of your body you want to get that really strong and ready to climb hard and if you've gotten to this level you've probably been climbing for a decent amount of time and after a while your body is going to start to hurt because climbing is often pulling only down here and we've round our shoulders off and we get a little bit of imbalance in the body so you need to work some antagonist training into your schedule this can be done at the end of your session i would not suggest doing this at the beginning of your sessions at all because you want those muscles to be plenty strong for the climbing or you could risk injury but doing like some external shoulder rotations and doing some different back work and you know using those chest muscles a little bit uh, and getting some of those things that are not so common in climbing some exercise is really good because it can keep the body healthy and it can keep you climbing hard for years and years and years so a couple of things that you can do to help yourself actually progress more past that v6 to v8 range is to get plenty of rest I'm talking eight plus hours of sleep and taking rest days after hard training sessions because you get stronger when you rest you don't get stronger while you're training so take that into consideration and if you're not sleeping enough you're going to not recover as fast and therefore it's going to take you longer to progress um, another thing is to get really good nutrition definitely get plenty of good high quality proteins because those proteins physically turn into tissue in your body so if you're getting a lot of protein you're giving your body a chance to make muscle tissue to actually make you a better climber so get that really good nutrition get a lot of protein a lot of good fats a lot of good carbs and you know even if you want to try to eat a little more than you normally do because it will give you a little bit of a boost in energy now that's a weird subject because if you have <clears throat> I try to tread lightly on this subject but dead weight in the body is not going to help you climb harder so just keep that in mind as a boulder I would focus heavily on strength and power work so uh, that is going to be like lock off strength finger strength and then explosive power um, so those are the things that are going to be the most useful and the hardest to build up if you happen to be in the case where your local climbing area has very very long boulder problems and that's what your goal is to do then work some power endurance into your schedule but i would not make it a priority because you need to get stronger not fitter as a boulder and the fitness can come quickly when you need it so focus on that power and strength and that will take months to build you know you can see a big change in that over three months and you can probably get fit in maybe two to three weeks to do most boulder problems and the last thing is at this level you have to avoid injury because you're starting to get to your physical limits and this is really hard to avoid and you have to you have to tread lightly during some of these training sessions because if you push yourself too hard and you get injured you're going to be climbing a lot lower of grades than you were before you got injured so be extremely careful with that and do not push yourself too hard and if you ever feel any tweaks stop take 10 minutes and make sure that it doesn't hurt anymore maybe take a whole day maybe take a whole week you know be careful and be smart common sense is very important here make sure you guys check out my discord server that's a place that you can get in touch with me at any time and talk to me about all kinds of stuff and there's some people on there that'll give you some good advice on training for climbing at this level now uh, the next video I'm going to do is from V9 to V11 because that's my personal limit and I don't want to talk about climbing things that are harder than I can personally climb. So stay tuned for that one and I will catch you guys there. So I can't say for sure that this offer is going to stand forever but I am trying to train a couple people, help them out and mentor them uh, at this time. 
I'm currently helping Chris out of the UK and I've had such a good experience with him that I want to take on a couple more people. If you guys are looking for a little help with your training plan or something like that, I can help you as a mentor. I'm not a certified trainer and I'm not going to consider myself an expert, but I can try to help you as a mentor and as someone that has climbed things that you might be wanting to climb. So. Get in touch with me uh, and I will definitely try to work something out with you. Right now, I'm just doing it purely out of the joy of doing it because it's so it's so much fun to, to talk to Chris and he tells me all about his workouts and I'm just having a blast doing it. So please get in touch with me if you are someone that's looking for a little bit of help and I'd love to give you some guidance.